I just went out back here, probably get a bit of wind noise here today. It's just one out back here looking at, normally don't see my mu ugly mug, but this is it. Yeah, so this is my XB GT that I've had for 17 years. I think it's a good old thing. Yeah. Give you a real quick overview on it. So what this is, is factory genuine XB GT automatic. Come out of the factory May of 1976. Body-wise, it's how I bought it 17 years ago. Done a couple of tiny little patches of rust in it. Had all the guards off, had the bonnet, front guards repainted. Bumper painted. I got into minor scratches and little ding and uh, bumper and that had to be replaced. So really other than that, I've got a set of performance mags, a bit like a Simmons three-piece, um, just simply for the decent tyre selection. I have uh, Bridgestone Transas and they're 235, 45, 17s. I just couldn't get any decent tyres for my old 12 slotters I have. Yes, this car, so modifications. It has a 408 stroker engine in it, uh, all scat gear, 4340 crank H beam rods and SRP forwards, pistons, pistons, two V open chamber heads, ported, better valves, better springs. Um, what have we got? We've got a um, adjustable yellow terra roller rockers with single collared valves and different uh, wine um, single. Um, it's a single plane manifold, wine accelerator, uh, pacemaker extractors, Barry Grant Mighty Demon 750 mechanical, uh, being tuned, all that's been all set up completely not to be touched, so he told me, by Georgie Wigginer from uh, Rangeview Garage at Landsborough on the Sunshine Coast, absolute guru on these older style engines, and he has later model distributor in there, a Bosch distributor, and he's completely set up for the larger bore larger bore oil pump drive, it's not 12.5, it's 13 mil, I think they are, I measured it, off memory, I think it's 13 mil, and you have your little electronic um, printed circuit board thingy O in here, that uh, that's in the XDs and XEs, so it's uh, distributed out of XD and XE, the XCs, as I understand it, had the module box on the firewall or something, uh, four of these brakes out of these things standard, Particularly over this because it takes too long to download otherwise. This is how they are, they've got factory bonnet clips, uh, they have these aluminium uh, vents in the bonnet, uh, you can actually get a piece of plastic that bolts on on the underside of the bonnet that basically ram airs it. Uh, twin headlight, I've got personalised number plates on it, I've got a high volume sump in it, um, high energy, oh, let's get underneath it, I'm out this new estate. Energy. Um, high energy sump um, and all the brakes and everything all standard. They're the, they're the Terenza tyres. I've got to get a wheel on on that yet. These things out of the factory, 5.8 litres, but the GTs actually have, they all have 9 inch diff, 9, nine inch diffs in the 5.8 litre or 3.5 ones. This is 408, 408 cubes now. Um, yeah, good brakes for a car out of the mid 70s. They started making these in 1973, and they finished in June of 1976. This is the second last month, second last month of manufacture. This is what they call snow white in colour. It's actually an XC colour of the day. So the last of the XBs were, they were using XC colours. As you can see, they're all blacked out around the car, and around the wind, around the windows, all blacked out. Blackouts on the back there. Um, yeah, that's a that twin pipe. Now those tips, that's a factory type tip. Uh, buy all that sort of stuff. These things easily as now because they're remanufacturing heaps of it. This thing here, you can see the nine inch. It's a Munro sensor tracks on it. Plus I've got them on the front. Uh, these sit these sit low to the ground. These the GTs compared to the Falcon 500. This one here has the uh, 124 litre fuel tank. The GDHA Phase Threes and Phase Twos had a 36 gallon fuel tank, I think this is 28 or something like that, if you can start working out, it's 24, 26 litres, something like that. These things have a, uh, you could, the real early of XB GTs, the big port ones, had 
what they called um, white stripe top loaders which were effectively uh, bullnose top loaders the same as what the phase twos and phase threes had in them this one has a short shaft top loader to you can't see it but a big tail shaft to a 28 spline 9 inch diff and uh, out of the out of the gearbox, the output shaft, I think it's 28 spline, um, I've measured it. All your bullnose stuff out of your phase twos and phase threes, not so much the original Windsor Hay, but all your Cleveland powered ones and the HOs were pretty special, very special car. And first few XBGTs, they run a lot of phase three stuff in them, only very few, use a bit of a bit of a um, casket on what you got or a bit of a um, lotto but I know that the uh, Australian muscle car, they've done a lot of research on them and they would run, a few of them run what they call the white stripe top loader, bullnose top loader, whatever they call it. And you could you could spec them up to big axles, um, mine are 28 spline, you could spec them up to I think 31 spline, uh, nodular iron. I, I'm not saying this is in the XB, but in your GDHO phase twos and phase threes especially, you could have about four different diff ratios. You could have, you could pretty well pick what you wanted in out of the Ford's parts bin. They, those things didn't have four disc brakes. Had big vented drums out of an American Lincoln Tan car or something like that. But this engine, this is absolutely, in my opinion, for a street engine, it's about 400 horsepower. Let's hang on, see well on. This thing here. As far as an engine goes, in my opinion, for a road going engine, you probably, well, I've just got to try and get this thing sitting properly on the head, it's, a, it's actually goggles from your motorbike. Um, but you really wouldn't get much better, much better engine to drive with. I'll just do a quick, quick thing like, I can just pull it straight and the top gear there, and that's. This, this thing's a 325 diff ratio, and like I'm just going up to the hill here now, and you just the acceleration on this thing, the torque is pretty good. These cars steer exceptionally well for their era because uh, cars sit squat on the road. But, oh, look, I've been in Hull, HZ Kingswoods, and five litre V8s. I've been in Bathurst 327 and Aros, my ex brother in law, had one of them for many years, 17 years of age. In the, Late 70s, so the car's effectively only a wasn't even a 10 year. I was a 10 year old car when he got it, his, and his older brother had it before that for a few years. But uh, these things, this model car, your Holdens of this era and your and your Falcons of this era drive that far superior to all that stuff. It's, yeah, the, the the best thing about all those old cars is the engine and probably the look. Where these things, I think, look pretty good. But I I actually like the. Uh, I've always been a big fan of the XB because I just to get towards the end, well it's the end of the GT run and I just, growing up as a kid, I'm 54 years of age, when I was growing up these things were new and uh, the odd one of them run around, I just live in this little country town, it's a very small town but um, the odd one of these things were were uh, running around and uh, honestly um, you just didn't see that many of them but when did you see them, even, even back then they got a good look but uh, now constantly get you know, people waving to you and, and if you take it to a car show you know, people tell me about when they when they seen them when they were new and their uncles had ones and everything else you've heard all the big stories and, but in my opinion I drive a lot of late model vehicles um, new Ford Rangers for work um, mates got all new cars they have new cars well there's nothing nothing with the sound of these things unless you get the new chefs with open pipes and they're not you know, more open up pipes than your HSVs and that sort of thing, your, your GDSs and that with that biomotor exhaust, they sort of sim, sound really nice but any of the, oh, be it six cylinders or whatever, I, I just don't think they sound anywhere near as good, they just don't, they just don't have the, the raw sound of these old carbide engines and um, you know, I don't say they don't go a lot better, some of them, this thing will thing will actually bust a fair few cars if you, if you wanted to do that but I've, for me it's just about owning it because I like it and I'll continue to own it it's actually a, 
It's actually a bit of a sanctuary, sanctuary to get into with the pressures of work and all the bullshit that goes on these days. Um, it's actually a... Um, those two blokes just having a good look. It's, just, it's actually good just to uh, get out in this thing. I'll just crack into it a bit in a second down here. Because we can't. I just think they're a pretty good thing. I might just want to bet that anymore. But yeah, you have all this stuff going on at work and you have pressures and this and that and what you can and can't do and rules and regulations. And probably only a matter of time and I have a rule and regulation that you won't even actually be able to put the foot into um, put the foot into your 400 cleaver. That's about all I want to go on with this video. I've had this car for 17 years and all being equal, hope to have it another 17 years and oh, just don't you love them? You just go around and wake her up the speed limit. You just watch this and then you just come around this corner, see the flat as bang it up to 95 pounds now by just tapping the foot from 80 but yeah you can just break the speed limit every day of the week if you're silly enough but uh, 54 years of age my head's level enough now to treat it with respect for, for what it is because apparently in this colour in what they call snow white in existence as I understand it they know there's about 12 left on the registry out of probably 80 Snow White four-door GT Falcons made. Because if I remember rightly, it was first introduced in May of 76. June was the last of it. I think it was 38 made in May of 1976. And a few more in June of 1976 in Snow White. Like I said, next C colour, and that was the end of them. So I think in the register, and this thing's on the register, about 12 left, they think, um, of Snow White XB Falcon GT four doors. So yeah, but anyhow, this is a non-restored one. And uh, all your dash, as you can see, all the dash. It's all just the same. Seats all original. I got big old heavy sheets and sheet seat covers in it because I don't like sitting on sliding around on vinyl seats. I don't take it out in summer much because it's too hot and sweaty. I've had air conditioning, but I've just removed the compressor and that. I'll put it back in if I ever sell it, or we'll go back in and be working if I sell it. But um, anyhow, that's uh, Swano Mink. Just come up to this uh, little um, rest area here and download this one, probably if it doesn't sound too stupid. And um, just come up, we're driving along Mountain View Road here, just going past Maloney Dairies, past Maloney High School. And I've been in a new estate there where I've filmed before. Like I say, to get in these things and just to go out on a beautiful day like today. That's it. Here is your McCarthy's lookout. And there's all the Mount View are and all that over there. So, yeah. I'll um, um, pull it up. Just went home, Mick, out.